Should you be concerned about the new Cummins emission recall? Well, as a certified Cummins mechanic, I'll explain the pros and cons about the 76 egg emission recall and why my truck behind me is not getting recalled. Jesus, does that thing just sound good. Welcome back to the channel, guys. We are back with this Ram 3500 Limited High Output Cummins, beautiful truck. To continue on the Cummins emission story, because on January 10th, we got some more concrete information. The Department of Justice, the EPA, as well as the California Air Resource Board all released the official proposed settlement that Cummins has agreed upon. Um, and while there is some really cool information in here, some interesting stuff that I wanna dive deep into. So right off the bat, the first critical piece of information, I think, is that the 2013 to 2018 trucks are the only ones that are proposed to be in this 67A emission recall. The 2019 plus trucks, the fifth gen Ram Cummins trucks, don't seem to be. Um, and this may be a little bit controversial because at first, we thought the 2013 to 2023, all 10 years had defeat devices in them. Turns out that's not true. Uh, the 2019 plus trucks do not have defeat devices in them and they are meeting full emission specs as per the EPA's independent testing. So looks like the 2019, the fifth gen Rams are not gonna have to be recalled. Now TFL has been doing an excellent job following the story as well. And they seem to think that the recalls for the 2019 plus trucks are coming later, um, but with the information that dropped on January 10th from the EPA, CARB, as well as the Department of Justice, um, it all points to that only the 2013 to 2018 trucks will be recalled a part of this official um, settlement that Cummins has agreed to. Additionally, the company I work for also owns a couple Chrysler Ram dealerships. So I got on the horn, I spoke with the service departments and they confirmed that the recall 67A only involves 2013 to 2018 trucks. I also had them run three fifth gen Ram Cummins VINs, a 2021, a 2022, and this 2022 Ram 3500 high output Cummins. All three VINs came back with no open emission recalls. So I can hesitantly and happily conclude that as of now, if nothing changes with this currently agreed upon proposal, the fifth gen Ram Cummins trucks will not need to be recalled. The reason why the 2019 plus trucks were in this whole thing to begin with is because Cummins failed to disclose certain software updates to the EPA. Apparently the EPA must be aware of all software involving emissions um, in order for these vehicles to be compliant. And I quote from the EPA, Cummins failed to disclose to the US EPA and CARB other software calibrations in model years 2019 to 2023. These additional failures to disclose also violated the Clean Air Act, even though the additional software calibrations did not include defeat devices. Turns out these trucks were always 100% emission compliant. And now that Cummins has disclosed the additional software to the EPA and paid its fine, these trucks are good to go. Now, lastly, guys, before we move on, I'm just seeing this chart now. Um, this is right off the EPA's website. As we can see, the 2019 trucks, some of them will actually need to be recalled. Depends on the build date. If it's built on or before October 1st, that is the critical date. And looking up top, some 2013 to 2015 trucks won't need to be recalled. Um, I'll drop this link with all the other information down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. So what if you own a 2013 to 2018? Well, um, those trucks were truly the real culprit, the real deal. Um, they 100% had defeat devices in them as we found out. Basically, the truck could tell when it was running an emission test and it would tighten everything up and be running really, really clean. And then once it got out in the normal road or normal driving conditions, um, it would pollute a lot more NOx gases than what was originally reported. The software defeat devices helped the truck pass standard EPA emissions tests, but they artificially reduced the effectiveness of emission controls and increased NOx emissions during normal driving conditions outside of the standard test conditions. Um, basically, in principle, this is exactly what VW did with their, uh, with their diesel scandal a number of years ago. It has been a couple of weeks since the 67A emission recalls have really started to be widely rolled out. 
And the number one complaint I hear from owners is the increased usage of diesel exhaust fluid or DEF. Good news is that other than that, it seems like power is relatively the same. Fuel economy for now seems to be the same. Um, and this does give me a good idea of what Cummins is probably doing with this software update to really um, minimize the NOx gases. So my guess would be is that Cummins is gonna utilize the EGR gases much more, a lot more EGR gas going through the engine um, in combination with, well, more death usage, which is what we are seeing. Good news is, is that method should maintain power numbers pretty well. The bad news is, is that's just gonna make the engine a lot more sootier. We're probably gonna start to see a lot more clogged EGRs, clogged intakes, and even clogged DPFs as a result um, of this. And additionally, because of all that extra soot, we're probably gonna see these engines have to regen a lot more which I think will affect the fuel economy in the medium to long run. I think as owners keep driving these engines with this new emission recall, they're gonna to start to notice a decrease in fuel mileage simply because of the additional regens needed to clear out all that extra soot. That's my guess anyways. Now, unfortunately today, we don't have any ISB commercial grade Cummins in the shop. We got this beautiful Kenworth behind me. The reason why I suspect that we're gonna have clogged EGRs, clogged EGR intakes, as well as clogged DPFs and reduced life in diesel particulate filters is because that's exactly what we see on the commercial side of things, the commercial ISB or the commercial 6.7 Cummins. One of the most common problems we see out here in the industry, at least with these 6.7 Cummins, is well clogged EGRs. Look how much soot is in there, guys. It's crazy. And then check this out. This is actually your intake into the engine. Again, filled with soot actually running through your engine. And no wonder um, these EGRs cause so much damage to these 6.7 Cummins here. All of those failures are very common. We deal with them all the time. And I suspect that's what Cummins was trying to avoid with these defeat devices, not having to run as much EGR gas through the engine to really limit the amount of soot the engine produces to again, avoid a lot of these problems that we see in the shop. Here's what a clogged DPF looks like. It doesn't actually look that terrible, but um, we replaced these because it was, uh, this thing was giving us grief. But uh, yeah, lots of soot will be run through these diesel particulate filters. Um, with that additional increase of EGR gas. If you guys do own one of these 2013 and 2018 Ram Cummins trucks, the absolute best thing you can do to mitigate soot in your engine is to get the engine up to operating temperature. Engines running at high temperature will dramatically limit the amount of soot that is produced and it'll lengthen the life of your after treatment system, your DPFs and your whole emission system will in theory just last longer with less issues. That's the number one thing I can recommend for you guys that do ha in fact have to get this uh, 67A emission recall done to your truck. I almost forgot, idling. Do not idle these engines for any amount of extended time. It just causes a ton of problems. It produces a ton of soot. And well, as we just heard, soot causes issues with these emission systems. Cummins has agreed to extend the warranty of their emission systems. Um, so hopefully if anyone does run into issues after their recall, it'll be covered by warranty. We don't know too, too much about the extent of that warranty coverage. I'm sure we'll find out more in weeks to come here. Now, the last interesting thing about this whole settlement is the mitigation that Cummins has agreed to um, partake in. Uh, roughly worth $325 million of additional money. So total, Cummins is looking at just under $2 billion for this whole situation. $125 million of that will go right to California and they will use that money to reduce emissions however they see fit. Additionally, Cummins will retrofit 27 locomotives with either low emitting diesels or electric motors. Um, and finally, they will retrofit 50 locomotives with idle reduction technology. So I do find this a little bit amusing, I guess, um, because the reason why Cummins is retrofitting 27 locomotives is to try and offset the NOx gases that Cummins let into the atmosphere um, illegally. And is the EPA inciting that 27 locomotives releases the same amount of NOx gases as 
630,000 pickup trucks? Because if that's the case, why aren't locomotive engines a part of the witch hunt as well? I don't wanna get political. It's, uh, at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with trying to reduce pollution. It just, it just seems like there's different rules for different people. And at times it's just, it's confusing as to which people need to follow what, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, that seems to wrap up the Cummins settlement worth $2 billion, roughly. And while they were certainly in the wrong with their trucks from 2013 to 2018 with those defeat devices, it'll be interesting to see how those trucks react with the new emission recall. We'll have to keep an eye on the medium to long term of those trucks, see what kind of happens. Obviously, if anything changes, um, I will let you guys know with this proposed settlement deal, although it does seem like it's pretty cut and dry. Cummins has agreed upon it. I believe they have like 30 days to pay. As always, guys, let me know what you think. You think I'm wrong? You think I missed something? Always love to hear from you guys when it comes to this type of stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. We got lots of truck content coming at you in 2024 and uh, can't wait. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you on the next freaking video.